Ronaldo. Is, is, is this our first meeting? I think it is. Our first a proper meeting. It is, it is, I think so. It, it would be interesting to have a conversation. It might not be on the topic that you think it is. Fine, whatever it is about. What I would like to talk to you about, actually, mm. is um, why you apostatized. Why I left Christianity. Christianity. Let, and let me just put all my cards on the table and yeah, yeah. be clear about what my intention is and the reason for it. Yeah. I'm not going to debate your reasons. Yeah. What I want to do is learn from you mm -hmm. and learn what your reasons were. Right. And, and what I would ask you to do is is not to give sort of retrospective reasons that you now have, but to but explain... What, I was, what was going on in my head at the time? Bingo. Right, okay. Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so that, that, that basically like a mini interview, a conversation. Yeah, I'm yeah. not going to challenge you on anything you say. You I, can challenge me, Bob. Let's well, do it. No, 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 if wait, you want. We, we can talk about God, uh, the, the reason why I believe in God. Challenge you, Bob. Bob. For, the moment, for the moment, what I'd like to talk about is, is you're on record as stating that you were once a Christian. Yes. Um, I know some people who have known you in another life who, who, who testify the fact that you, you know, used to keep a Bible, and, um, and 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 so what? I've never used to keep a Bible. Okay, then maybe maybe they're giving me some tough information. I'll go and talk to them about it. My family used to. Fair enough. But myself, no. I so, was I wasn't that deep into it. Yeah. If I'm honest with you, most of my family were Seven Day Adventists. Well, all of my family are Seven Day Adventists. Yeah. My mum was Seven Day Adventist, yeah. but she was in and out. Right. However, in my teenage years, yeah. I was really close with my cousins. Yeah. So I used to go with my cousins to church. Yeah. Not my mum. Right. So I was always with my cousins and my aunts at church. Yeah. And that is where I kind of built up my Your understanding, my of, understanding faith of Christianity and, 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 so and all that and kind so of stuff. Forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, because, because I am a white man and this heat is killing me, can we stand a bit closer <laughs> to the shade? That's, that, that, yeah. I thrive that, in that, that book. That, uh, well, you can stand in the sunshine. I thrive I'll, in the sun. I'll stand in the shade. So, so go on. You, so you started going to church with your, your auntie and your cousins. And my cousins, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and you said that you weren't that deeply into it. What, what do you mean by you weren't that deeply into it? It's okay, like, so let's say I was... Because we went on Saturdays, right? Yeah. So seven events on yeah, Saturday. Yeah, seven so let's say, from a, let's say a solid five years. Yeah. A solid five years from maybe the ages of 11 up until about 16, 15, 16, I was in it. Yeah. Every Saturday, go in. Yeah. And Sunday was Sunday school, we did Sunday school as well. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, a it, solid four or five years. Yeah, so it took up a, a fair chunk of your life. And what were you doing at church, you know, when, when you were going? Well, and... we were like the same stuff. We listened to the pastor. Yeah. Um, and then I don't know if you know anything about the seven day event. So, sun, sunset on a Friday. Yeah. Everything you keep is. The, the Sabbath, we, like we, the Jews. Yeah, we kept keep the, the Sabbath. Sabbath. They kept the Sabbath. Yep. properly so yep. so the sunset everything tv off radios yep. off everything yep. off yep. and we'd have what they called a quarterly which was like our um uh, little pamphlets and stuff yep. so we'd read from that yeah we'd sit down as a family read about certain verses from the bible yeah and, and certain and did you do that with your mum when she was more into it with my aunts with your aunts and your cousins and my cousins yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so we do that like on a on a weekend yeah and then on a saturday morning We'd go to church, be there for the whole day, sunset, and then... And would it be fair to say that at this time, I mean, were you committed and convinced at that period of in your life? Because that's what you thought, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you thought, were, it was Jesus like... Jesus Christ was my Lord and Saviour, and yeah. God was real and all that kind of stuff, yeah. 100%. So when when did the first conscious glimmerings of... what what So... Not, what, un not until I was probably... 21. What started to happen then that unsettled that? I'll tell you what started to happen with me. I It would have to be a spiritual experience. Okay. And um, But not of the religious kind. Yeah. 
I had I probably had like a dream I had a dream and um, I was asking myself what it's literally what were African people doing before they were Christians yeah. I don't know where the question came from yeah I couldn't yeah. tell you yeah but I started asking that question and that set me on a search yeah that set me on a search so there was obviously some kind of narrative that had sort of you'd, you'd sort of picked up at maybe an unconscious level about 100%. black identity 100%. you know that raised this question yes. that, that proposed it yes, 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 yes. Yeah. And, and and so you, you you asked this question to yourself and then you said you had a dream and yeah yeah like I dreamt about it, like what were we doing and then I would ask myself on a regular basis what we were doing and then yeah. That question was niggling in the back of my mind because I was uh, I was around a lot of people who were talking about black identity. Yeah, who were these people? Where, where um, friends. Coming? Yeah. Um, friends from like college and stuff. Yeah. Were they Christians themselves? The, most of them were raised Christian. You but I hear a but there. No, most of them raised Christian, but you know, weren't practicing. Yeah, like part-time Christian. You know, a lot of people do part-time Christianity. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> they do Absolutely. Like, Cultural part- Christians all over the UK there you go. do part-time Christianity. Yeah, culture, yeah. Uh, yeah, my family are raised Christian, but, you know, every... Um, I don't really practice, but I believe in God. Those type of people. Yeah, yeah, So, yeah. yeah. And then, you know... And a lot of your friends who were talking about these black identity questions yeah, 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 were yeah. coming from that, that mm-hmm, perspective. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. So that's what kind of sent me on a search when I started researching like, the history of Africa. It was about like, early 21s, but I wasn't really... I was still wearing my cross. Yeah. I still thought of Jesus Christ as my Lord and Saviour. I, w- I would say, up until the age of about 24, 25, I was definitely a believer in Jesus Christ. Yeah. And this, this question about black identity, mm. w- was that something that was ever being addressed in the church? No. 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 Not, 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 not in my church. Yeah. So you had a, this fundamental question. Did you, did you go and speak to your pastor about it? Or? Nah. Why not? I wasn't really that cool with Pastor. Okay. Me and Pastor weren't that cool. Alright. You weren't getting on with your Pastor? Nah, we weren't that cool. Right. We, 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 we had a big disagreement when I kind of understood my black identity as well. So Yeah. I think you could sense that I wasn't really yeah. part of the clique. I was the rogue. Yeah. My Pastor could sense I was the rogue. Right. So he was So like, something, yeah. something, even before you left the faith, mm. something had already started in you. That yeah, meant yeah. that your pastor had seen you as someone slightly outside yes. of 100% uh, uh, of the camp. 100%. And, uh, and could you, would you be able to pinpoint what that was? Um, I probably wasn't coming as much. Yeah. I, and I'd also tell you what my um, my cousin held like what they would call a men's meeting. Yeah. And men's meeting was like every Thursday, and so all the guys from like the church would come together and we'd speak about man stuff. Yeah. In relation to church, but a lot of man stuff, yeah. and it's there that a lot of my the stuff that I was learning would come out. Yeah. So I talked to him about black identity. I talked to him about is Christianity best for us, all this kind of stuff. And what were they and saying? Then, and then it, and they were like, well, the Bible says this, and we shouldn't really think about race too much, and all this yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. And so from those meetings, those meetings got back to pastor, and he was like, hmm, this guy's a little bit of a rogue. Yeah. So um. So rather. And then, and then the family started talking. Yeah. Go on. Then the family started talking and saying, oh, we heard in the men's meeting that you were saying certain things and, you know, what are you questioning and stuff. So I was like, you know, I'm on my own journey, so I'm still going to talk. I've always been outspoken. Yeah, yeah. I can, people can never stop, shut shut me up. So I'm just that kind of person. Fair enough. So you you, you started down this, so so what I'm hearing is that you were making friends Mm. uh, amongst people that were asking the same questions as you. Yes. And when you tried to ask those questions in the church, you found that they weren't really being grappled with. And Mm. rather than your pastor sitting down with you and really wrestling with those questions, what they did is just sort of keep a distance from you and see you as a bit I tell you what was a nail in the coffin. Go on. The nail in the coffin. I don't want to get to the nail in the coffin just yet. Okay, go on. I I, I wanted to make sure I understand the journey first. Yeah, the journey. This, but this is... And uh, am I I summarizing the journey accurately? Yeah, um, I have no problem with the journey. So what, what far. It so, right. so that, that process continues for a bit and then, then what happens? And then I think the nail in the coffin was I was in a men's meeting. Yeah. And um and Pastor said he's gonna come to the men's meeting that day. Because it was just all the guys. Right? Yeah. So Pastor decided to come. And um you got you're getting an exclusive story out of me now, Bob. This Absolutely. is this is supposed to be for my documentary. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I jumped on you. <laughs> um 
You can use this Should as I an tell advert. it? Should you, I tell it? You, Should I say for the documentary? Because I'm making one. But, all right, you'll get it, you'll get it, you'll get it. Okay. But I'll, 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 I'll retell it, it's fine. Yeah. So, Pastor did a, a, um, did a talk on black history. Yeah. But from a biblical perspective. Right. Right? So, what he done is that he used the curse of Ham. Yeah. And the curse of Canaan, Ham Canaan, right? Yeah. And showed and showed us a bunch of black people who were all black in there. And he said that Ham was cursed, his son was Canaan, and um, that's how black people came around. And I listened to him for like an hour and a half, tell this story, and then he showed what black people done and the civilizations, da 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 da. And I stood up and I was like, Pastor, essentially you're telling me we're from a cursed people. Essentially. You're yeah. telling me that the reason why we're black is because we're from a cursed people. Yeah. And so I was like, I don't buy it. I said, how can you as a black man... Just for the record, I don't buy that either. That's fine. But I was saying, how can you as a black man, with all black, all black men amongst you, tell all of these guys that were cursed, essentially? And yeah. so I said, Black History Month is supposed to be the upliftment of your spirit as a black person. You just told me that I'm cursed yeah. for an hour and a half. Yeah. And I said, I don't buy it. And he was like, no, well, you need to understand. I said, no, I don't buy it. I said, I, t I, said, I didn't use the term bullshit. Yeah. But I s essentially said, you know, you're talking bullshit. Yeah. And I don't believe what you're saying. Because yeah. from, what, from my knowledge, black people didn't come from that curse. Yeah. So, and I walked out. And that was like... And that was it. That was sayonara. Yeah, now, out of interest, what, why at that point did you not think to yourself, right, I'll go and find another church? Because I, I was literally done with church. You were done I was, with church? I was done. I was so that done. experience was so negative to you? No, because I knew that I existed before the church. Yeah. When and you so say I, I guess you mean I, well, the black I know black race? People, yeah, black people existed yeah. before the church. And so that was my, I became, I was... It's a good team. argument to say you existed before the rest of us, but carry on. You know, it's like, I'm the daddy, I keep telling yeah. people. <laughs> <laughs> I keep maybe, telling people maybe, I'm the daddy. Maybe, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll skip <laughs> that. All we'll right, well, that. I'm the yeah. daddy, but what I'm saying is that when, when I realised that, because the narrative that black people generally got, um, it's slavery of, of our history let's yeah. say it's slavery and colonization and all this kind of stuff and so what what it was for me is that I'm I'm now coming into the realization that we existed before all of that stuff and yeah. we were doing other stuff before all of that stuff and so when I realized black people's relationship to Christianity the current form of Christianity I'm always say the current form because Christianity was in you had the Coptic Christians and you also had the Ethiopian Christians yeah. before that and Absolutely. it's a different form of Christianity yeah books got more you know they got more books all this kind of stuff and yeah. they te have different teachings so I said I existed before or we existed before Christianity existed yeah and so yeah I was done with yeah I was done with Christianity yeah in terms of in, in, and, and so what 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 I'm picking up from that and and as I say that for those of you that are listening in you're probably expecting a debate but actually I'm just conducting an interview so if you're expecting some kind of debate you're going to be disappointed I'm afraid uh. but but what what I'm hearing from that is that, that that fundamentally questions were not being addressed in your fellowship that needed to be addressed were there were there other things going off in your life as well like cuz cuz no, it seems to me I was doing me... quite well I was that's when I was really acting I was on TV, I yeah. had my girlfriend, we were like stable, like it, it was really, like my life was cool. Yeah. It was literally that part, cause she started, she started, my girlfriend at the time, she started saying, um, oh, I think I want to get more into my Christianity. And I was like, what? I'm just getting out of it. What are you talking about? And she was like, no, my friends are going to church more. And I'm like, no, 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 come over yeah. here. Let's talk. But um, we're no longer together. Right. Um, but I was like, I was what, 24, 25, long yeah. time ago, long time ago. Yeah. The hair's, the hair's gone now. And, and since um, then, where has your journey taken you? Um, well, it took me... Because uh, am I right or wrong in, in, in thinking you've described yourself as a black nationalist? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, just, just pan out for me what that means. Okay, so I am for the forward movement and upliftment of black peoples on a global scale. Yep. Mm. So Essentially. Pan-Africanism, you call it Pan-Africanism. Yeah, I was going to, I was going to use that. You, call, you can use Pan-Africanism. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So I, I, I really want to deal in race-first politics, and and I've always said to people, the re the reason why I want to deal in race-first politics, isn't because I'm a racist or isn't because I hate people. Yeah. It's because what I found is when we, I've been around the globe, I've been to all places. I've been to Lebanon, I've been to bloody Spain, I've been to Mauritius, I've been, I've been all over the globe, and what I found is a constant, and the constant is wherever you go. 
black people seem to be at the bottom of the social economic ladder. Yeah. Globally. And so if we all have, I've said to black people, if we have, if we have that collective experience, then that we have something in common. Hmm. My phone's ringing, sorry. Are you needing to stop? Nah, that's all right. Yeah. You can wait. Um, and so if we have that collective experience, then we need to band together as a collective because I would say if Christians as a group, let's say, were at the bottom of social economic globally, they we would are say, in some fa- in right, but, yep, but yep, we yep. would, but you would probably say, hey, as Christians, we need to band together, get together, exactly and, and, and right, listen, That's exactly what I'm saying. Chinese people, whatever group yep, it is, yep, yep. you would need to band together. Yep. And so when I find this constant, I say to black people, listen, w- let's would, band together. W- would it surprise you that I in no way oppose any of your aims? No, of course not. Now, I, and, and I don't oppose any of your aims because of my faith. Okay. Because I think that those people who are the most socially excluded, yeah. the the picture of justice that we receive in the Old Testament mm-hmm. is that, that God says that you care for the weakest in society. Mm-hmm. So when, when God was talking about that in the Old Testament, he was talking about widows and orphans because they were, the, the, and the stranger amongst you is right. what, he, what he talked about. Right. And, he, and he was talking about how, he, 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 he was talking about how true true um, fasting for him was that you you set the prisoner free from their bonds from that their you that you help the widow that you help the orphan that you cared for the stranger mm. and the refugee and so on and so the idea that, that, that there is a, a group of people who are at the very bottom of the social spectrum mm-hmm. to me it, it flows very well with my faith right the, the, the things that hold them back, should be taken off okay I don't disagree with that but Christianity is not one of those things no Christianity keeps us there hold on did has Christianity kept Africans in Egypt and Ethiopia held back or did or did the church develop and sustain and nourish a culture in Ethiopia and Egypt I do I do with to answer that question I do with psychology I like yeah. to do with psychology yeah and I have always said, there's, a, there's this whole thing going about now about the victor and the victim. The okay. psychology of the victor and victim. Yep. The psychology of the victim waits for someone to save them. The psychology of the victor saves themselves. I agree. And so... And in Christ we're more than conquerors. Right, but you're still waiting on Christ to save you. And in Christ we're more than conquerors because he that is in us is greater than he who is in the world. And as Christians, right, but are you still waiting on Christ to save you from this? I am saved and I am being saved. Yeah, but what, what I'm trying to say is you're waiting on heaven. Like you're waiting on a... Um, so I don't believe in heaven, you see. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to a psychology that says you can have your heaven. So like I, I made a video the other day about... Sorry to go on a filibuster, but... The psychology of paradise lost yep. and paradise inherited. Yeah. And we have different people on the globe, on yep. the planet, yep. that have a different psychology. So, yep. if you are born into what you people call paradise, you don't develop a paradise lost psychology. With, with respect, sorry, you, 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 you're, you're sidestepping my point. All right, go on. Because you have suggested as a premise mm. that, that Christianity is holding black people back. Mm-hmm. And I am giving to you as evidence to the contrary, using the Coptic and Ethiopian churches, Right. And the fact that if you look at church history, many Africans contributed to the development of the Christian faith, like St. Augustine. But did they do that because they were Christian or because they were African? They did that because they were, well, I, 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 I don't think that, well, firstly, there wasn't a pan-African identity to no, speak No, no, I know that, but I'm saying, this, what I'm so, trying to, so, so, you, to use some, oh, okay, what I'm trying to say, Africans have been building societies before Christianity came along. Yes, every, They're, every race has had right, so, civilization so it's no before su- any religion right came but along. so it's no surprise yeah. that a, a, a civilization of or a people that build civilizations for a living yeah can take any system and still build a civilization because it's in them they didn't build but they didn't build, human nature yeah exactly but they didn't build it because they were christian but they didn't build it because they were black either no they built it because that's in them to build a society that's human nature because yes, when so you made, don't need christianity to build on. a society we're made in the image of god yeah, god that's let your me, belief now. allow me allow me allow me to that's express belief, my now, point allow me to express right, my point on. we're made in the image of god 
And as such, because we are made in the image of God, we reflect our creator. And as our creator creates, so we instinctively, and if you read the, 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 the poetic story of Genesis, it is a story where God brings order to chaos. That is the story of Genesis. And instinctively, human nature... You're, you're going to preach to me now, Bob. Let, no, I didn't interrupt you're you, Sarah. You're preaching to me now, Bob. I did not interrupt you. Don't interrupt me. I, in terms of, in terms of the, 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 the Genesis story, we are said to be made in the image of God. And so we see within our nature this desire to create order out of the chaos of the world around us. Now, truth, as the philosophers would say, is that which closely, most closely, reflects reality. reality. That's, the, that's the philosopher's definition of truth. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that the Christian narrative is that which accords mostly, most closely, with the reality of truth around us. So I am not suggesting that these Africans helped to contribute to the church because they were Christian. Okay. So I'm going to come circle back around to that. Right. Um, but I'm also saying that they're not doing it because they're African either. They're doing it because they're, they're human. They're human, yeah, I agree. They're human. Now, the fact that they became Christian meant that they focused their energies to the church. Mm -hmm. Now, in a very real way, I as a European Christian mm -hmm. am indebted to mm -hmm. African Christians for my inheritance in church oh, history. Yeah, of course, because you've got the Coptic Christians and the Ethiopian ones, of course. Well, no, they, they, were, they, they, they grew, grew from that. Your argument, humanity holds black people back. Your current form, remember I said current form. You did say uh, current form. Current what I'm form. saying to you is that Ethiopian and Coptic Christianity... They didn't have, the, they didn't have this form? They, they still exist, they've existed for 2,000 years, well, they're as old as the, anything The in Christianity Europe. that you follow is not Coptic Christianity or Ethiopian Christianity. No, it it's isn't. not. No. Right, so it's not that form. You have a different form. Actually, you have the more cath Catholicized form I, of I, Christianity. I, 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 I am simply a Christian and I am as happy to go <laughs> to a Coptic church as I am to go to a Catholic church. Yeah, but church what I'm trying to say to you though, like if, if, if we strip, strip it down, yeah. you have a more Catholicized form of Chris, of. of of Christianity, well, well, whereas Coptic the Coptics and the Ethiopians don't. Well, actually, c c Catholic forms of Christianity, the Copts are Catholic forms of Christianity. Okay, but the Copts were before the Catholic Church, though. They, they, they grew simultaneously. The church in Rome and the church in Alexandria grew simultaneously. St. Peter... Can I get a date for that? Yeah. You can go and speak to the Coptic Christians and go and see who they say is the first founder of their church, and they'll say it's St. Mark. St. Mark who wrote the Gospel of Mark. Okay, but the, speak to them. but the Coptic, but Coptic Christianity has been around before Catholicism, though. Sorry, how many Coptic Christians do you know? I don't move with Christians like that. Okay, right. I know. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't I really know. Move with Christians I know like loads that. of Coptic Christians. Okay, okay. I know loads of. Coptic so, Christians. do you know the origins of the Coptic Christians? Yes. In the Nile Valley. It, it started in Alexandria. Yeah, the Nile Valley, yeah. Africa. Started in Alexandria. This yeah. city. Okay, so is it? So now is it? A, now is it a uh, coincidence? that from a, a great civilization building people, like the Egyptians, yeah. that, and they had their deities and their principles and yeah. their spirituality, yeah. is it a coincidence that right around the same area that another form of spirituality popped up, like Christianity? Right, well, let, let's just deal with that because it seems to imply something that I have a problem with. Mm -hmm. Human civilization is something that has been congruous since the, the first man. The idea of creating order... He was... Adam is the poetic, yeah. the poetic description of it. All right, you know? Bob. So, so the, We're going to disagree there, you know that, right? right, right yeah, but I, okay, I don't right. mean that literally. I'm just talking about the first man, of which Adam is a symbol. But the, the human nature from its very beginning has always sought to create order and civilization. The Greeks also had a, 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 a very well-developed civilization. So yep. did the Romans. Yep. So did the Parthians, mm -hmm. so the Babylonians, the Assyrians. You know, did they all borrow from one another. Uh, they, they, they were all cross-fertilizing one another. Right. All cross-fertilizing. So Christianity was an amalgamation of those oh, uh, different spiritual systems. You're jumping too far ahead. Okay. So in terms of in terms of the the Christian faith developing in Egypt, uh -huh. yeah, it developed at the same time in the Greek-speaking world. In Greece and in Rome. Well, if we so, my point that to you I'm making is that that Christianity is as much African as it is European. But if we call it Judeo Christianity, yeah. If we call it Judeo Christianity, yeah. Which to give it its proper name. To give it its proper name. We will see that the main patriarch of the five books was raised in Egypt. Yeah. 
I, I, I'm, I got no dispute the fact that Egypt has played a huge amount mm. uh, of influence within biblical history. I got no problem with that at all. So then, where would Moses have got his teachings from? So, what, what, what was your point from that? Because, like I said, it's no coincidence. Before, like I said, it's no coincidence. I said, or is it coincidence that a great civilization building people who have their own spiritual systems yeah. and their own temples and their own principles and their own gods and all this kind of stuff? Is it coincidence that Judeo Christianity sprang from the same area? Well, let me let me let me let me address that directly. Mm -hmm. the, the the fact of the matter is that the the Christian faith started in Palestine, based upon a claim that Christ had risen from the dead, and that so radicalized the first believers that they went out in all different kinds of directions mm -hmm. to proselytize this belief that Christ was the Jewish Messiah right. and the savior of the world. So what about Judeo-Christianity? I am talking about Judeo-Christianity. No, Moses started it. No, Judeo that's, where first, that's where the first five books Ju come from. Judeo-Christianity historically begins and- the, the Doesn't begin with Moses, you're saying? Academic, re uh, academic figures, Linda Woodhead, um, Paul Fletcher, um, uh, uh, countless others, historians of religious history, will tell you that the starting point of Judeo-Christianity was in first century Palestine. So it's not with Moses then, is what you're saying? Judaism, the Mosaic Covenant, started right. with Moses. Right. However, sorry, sorry. The, the, point of, the point that civilizations embraced Christianity proves nothing. Because there were civilizations all the way around the world, and all those civilizations brought something into the church because the church is for all nations. My faith takes what is best in any culture it encounters and magnifies it, and seeks to reduce that which is worst mm. according to the prism of Judeo-Christian value systems and ethics. It's not like Islam where we say that you've got to, you know, take on Arab culture mm -hmm. to be a good Muslim. I hear that. Yeah, that, that's not I our that. faith. I hear that. No, I hear that. And the proof of that is the Coptic and Ethiopian church. They brought African culture into the church. And as a Christian, mm. that inheritance is as much mine as the Sistine Chapel is theirs. Right. They, they are as much the owner to me of Westminster Abbey as I am of the cathedrals that have been dug into the mountains of Ethiopia. That is a very poetic way to look at stuff, I would say. However, it's a beautiful way, no? It's a, it's a beautiful way to look at stuff. However, now if, let me, let me ask if you. we strip it back, <laughs> yeah. Bob, if we strip it back... Which you keep trying to do. Yeah, we've got to strip it back. We've got keep, to. Go on. So if we, got, if we go back to, like I said, back to the origins of, let's say, Judea or the Mosaic law. Yeah. Yeah? So Moses was raised within Africa. Yes. So he was raised within, according to the Bible, he was raised within the house of Pharaoh. Yes, we've got no problem with any of this. Moses, Acts 7 verse 22 yeah. says, and Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians yeah. and was mighty in their words and deeds. Yeah. And so Moses himself, or the Bible itself states that Moses was raised in here yeah. and got most of his stuff from there. Yeah. Right. Got no issue with this. Right. However, when you get to Moses, Okay, when, when, when we get to the story of Moses, yeah. we get Moses getting stuff from God. Which he does. But he was raised there. So your, your point is, what you're doing there, sir, is you're selectively taking some verses that talk about the African influence and saying... But we can go to Egypt, though, and we can, but, find, those, on we can find those Ten Commandments what, what, on second. the walls of Egypt. Yeah, that's why they're called natural law. Because na the reason why the church describes the Ten Commandments as natural law is because it has never claimed those Ten Commandments are unique to the Judeo-Christian faith, but are something that every civilization could achieve by the use of their own reason. And so, but it just so happened that God had to give Moses those, God, those God laws, incorporated, even, though, even though Moses was raised in Egypt and already knew those God, laws. God incorporated those laws into the Mosaic Covenant that you go and look at church teaching, Sarah, because it's clear to me that you, you are not familiar with it. Church teaching says that there is the natural law and the revealed law. The natural law is that which any civilization, regardless of revelation, can achieve through the use of their own reason, such as don't kill, but Moses don't knew murder. That. Before God gave Moses that, completely, yeah, yeah, Moses knew because he murdered one of the one of the Pharaoh's so soldiers, right? Yeah, yeah, and he ran because yeah. he knew yeah. it wasn't right to do it. So, the so why? Well, let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. 
So Moses, it's your Bible states Moses was raised in in the house, knew all the yep. the wisdom of yep. the Egyptians. Yep. However, yep. Moses or the story of Moses is that he got it. He got these natural laws. No. As you would, you're being selective. From God, that's what he says. No, you're but being we selective, can, but, no, but, but we can go to the walls of Egypt and find those laws. So, listen, so did Moses get the laws from Egypt so, or did he get the laws from God? So listen to what I'm saying to you. Listen to what I'm saying to you. The Christian faith teaches that natural law any civilization can achieve through the use of their own Did Moses reason. teach that? What? You said Christianity teach that. Yes, this is what the church teaches. Did, did Moses teach that? I can't say whether Moses taught that. But so then who might not? I, I'm I, going back to the story of Moses. But my authority is the church, not Sarah Garvey and not Sarah Garvey. I'm going back to Moses though. You're going back to the church, a bunch of people I who, want you, who didn't get the revelation. Engage, Moses got it. Let me finish my point and then engage with it. All right, go for it. So here's my point. Mosaic law is something that combines elements of natural law with elements of revelation, okay? The fact that God stamps his approval on things that other civilizations have achieved through their own reason mm. doesn't mean, and we're not arguing, and I am not arguing, stood here to you, mm. that, that, that Moses never brought anything that he learned from Egypt into, into, in, into his life. Right, okay. No. The Egyptians achieved their knowledge of natural law through their own reason and intelligence. Yes, but the story is though. Bob. Can I finish my point? All right, sorry, go on, go on. And then after, and then Can after I finish I go. my point. Yeah, finish your point. So, because and, and and ladies and gentlemen, this is how debate it's, should be at Speaker's Corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unlike when the Dawa team come in and start heckling everybody and shouting at everybody, this just proves that people can have an intelligent, normal discourse. It all depends on the person yeah. you're speaking to. Well, I mean, the Dawa team don't leave me with much confidence. <laughs> but but anyway, so the point that I'm making to you, and please listen and then engage. Go for it. Natural law is something that is structured within human nature and something that we can see with the use of our reason. It does not take revelation for you to know that murder is wrong, that stealing is wrong, that committing adultery is wrong. You don't need revelation for those things. Okay. Okay? Egypt had those things yes. without any revelation from God, and so did other civilizations as well. Egypt is not unique. Agreed. The Babylonians had it also. Agreed. Now, Moses has a, a, a supernatural experience with the divine. He has an encounter with Elohim, with Yahweh, the burning bush, mm. and this radicalizes his life, and he takes the people out of Egypt. Now, when they come out of Egypt, they have been slaves for 400 years. They are essentially savages. And God brings his law, brings his covenant to them, dealing with them where they are, the savages that they are. Okay? Now, I am not denying, I am not denying that Moses was influenced by Egypt, that he knew these things. Right. The fact that God then takes these, these natural laws and brings them into the Mosaic Covenant doesn't mean that they are not also from God because God is the creator. These things are natural laws. They are structured within the human heart. You can see them just using your own reason. They are there because the creator created them in you. Yeah, but what you're saying is, what, what you're asking me to do is, right, on, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to be ob as objective and okay. logical as possible. Yeah. What you're asking me to believe, Moses already knew these laws. Yes. That God revealed them to him again, even though he already knew them, and then he gave them to his people. And it's More not like and a I, oh, stamp of authority. And, and it's not. Moses already knew them and then revealed them to his people. Where does it say he doesn't know them? No, no, I said he knew them. Alright, hold on. When he murdered the Egyptian god, what did he do? He ran. Why? Because he knew it was wrong. Exactly. So the you Bible, be, so, so, so exactly. So the Bible isn't suggesting that Moses didn't know them. The Bible is stating quite clearly that he knew. So then, did God write them, or did Moses write them for His people? That's no. the question. Well, the, the 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 thing to get from the Book of Exodus isn't like the thing to get particular about is the fact that God has taken His people, He has chosen a people and he brings them out of Egypt, which actually flows into the very narrative that, that you're interested in, which is this God idea... God chose a people? Yes, God chose a people, yeah. He chose you a believe people. that? Yes, I do. Even though he created all people, he, he chose create, a yes. particular set? I absolutely, I believe So that's that. superiority then? No, because it's not about superiority. It is about this people being his people as an example to the world. 
And God has used the Jews as an example. But that's what the Muslims say. What? The Muslims say that God chose them, yeah, as the example to the world. No, that, that, that's uh, the, you're confusing two things because Judaism as a faith understands itself to be something that you can't convert into. It is an ethnicity and a people. Islam is actually much more like Christianity in that both our religions state that anyone from any ethnicity can join. So you, act so so you actually that. believe that the Jews were chosen by God? Yes. Bob, I thought you were smarter than that, bro. I, I am smart. But, 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 but so God, my intelligence. So God, so God made all of these my, people on the globe. My, my, my intelligence is. And chose a specific yes, group of for people. For what purpose? For the purpose of bringing His law into the rest of the world. No, this is, you see what you what you're you, what you're doing here. You, you, Why didn't God choose everyone? May, may, I, may I reply? So you've asked is two that questions. Smart, though? You've asked two questions. Allow me to reply. Go for it. So question one was God created all people, why did he choose the Jews? Mm. Well, he chose the Jews because he wished to establish a historical example um, and an historical context into which he will then enter history and through which he will work in history. And he will do that because he wants to demonstrate that there is one God, the true God, Yahweh, and that through the people of Israel, the Everyone's got the true God, Bob. This is what I'm I saying. didn't interrupt you, sir. Sorry, sorry, Don't sorry, interrupt sorry, me. Sorry. You're better than that. I am, I am. You're better I am. than that. And remember, you're an example right now to everyone who's watching. And so, so are the Jews. Absolutely. So, so they, they are. <laughs> they are. And here's, here's why it's an example, ladies and gentlemen, is because no people in history have been more persecuted than the Jewish people, and yet they stand wow. astride in the nations. Whoa. Let me finish. Whoa. Let whoa, me finish. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sarah, let me finish. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You asked two questions. Bob, you asked two questions. I'm an African man. You asked two questions. I'm an African man. You asked two questions. Sorry. You I'm not going to let that slide though. Questions. I can't let you that can slide. Come back to it. I can't let that slide. You can come back to it. Jews have had you persecution. You can come back to it. But to say they are the most persecuted people in history. Have you have you read African history? There, there is no African people to speak of. There are tribes in Africa, and each like of those said, tribes collectively, see themselves as being distinct from one another. The black peoples of the globe have a collective uh, holocaust, if you want to call it, that I'm, I'm not trying to even like... We're not talking it's not about even the Islamic a slave trade. But I'm just saying, why not? We're not talking about why the not? Islamic slave trade. Why not? Because we're talking, you're, you want to talk to me about biblical history. That's yeah, but where you, you started. But you said historically, you're the jumping Jews around are topics. the most persecuted people yeah let me you, no, didn't, you only the heard most... the first part what did i say after that sorry go on if i if I, exactly I, go on, go on, go you on. were so busy interrupting me sarah right, you on. didn't listen to the answer All right, go on, go on. so if, listen if, if, to if the I, answer if i went too quick go for it right but so I, i'm still going to disagree the jewish it, people are are look at them today as a people again and again and again they have come back from absolutely desperate situations mm. that have wiped out other nations completely. Yeah, the Romans tried to wipe them out. The Nazis tried to wipe them out. The, the Muslims tried to oppress them. Even the church oppressed them. And yet the Jewish people today, for their genius and for the blessing that God has given them, we are all blessed. Their genius is why you have your mobile phone. Their genius is why you're able to use sat-nav. Their genius is behind so much of the modern world that we enjoy, as according to prophecy that God would bless the nations through the seed of Abraham, through his sons Isaac and Jacob and their descendants. And this living prophecy, we are all the beneficiaries of. Can I, can, can I stick up in there? Yeah. Do you remember before when I spoke about the curse of Ham? Yep. And you said you don't believe it. I don't believe in the curse. Okay. I don't believe that black people generally are okay. cursed because of this uh, Ham. text in, in Ham. In Ham. Okay. I don't believe that. Okay, so you said that, but you said the Jewish people, the, are you talking about the European Jew that we see today? I'm talking about anyone who's a descendant of Abraham. But, through the line of Isaac and Jacob. Okay, so are you talking about the ones in Israel? I'm talking about Israeli Jews, European Jews, Sephardic African Jews. Jews, Jews. But if you talk about African Jews now, yeah. if you talk about African Jews, yeah. we can see how African Jews are treated right. differently to the European Jew, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so, and, and this is where I come in. Right? Go on. This is where I come in, because I say, collectively as African people, 
it doesn't matter. So imagine, imagine the African people, as you say, the African Jews are of the lineage of Abraham. Are they treated that way? I'll say again. Are, are the African people that you say, or the African Jews, that are of the lineage of Abraham, are they treated that way? By who? By their, by their own Jewish um, Ummah, by their own Jewish community. I, 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 I don't know. I can't say I've ever looked into it. I can't honestly say. Okay, so... Like You're I asking said, me a question of which okay, I've so, never researched. So okay, so we have Operation Moses. Have you heard of Operation Moses? Sorry, Hang on, I've, we, I've got to go into this now. Skipping around. No, 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 no. But, no, because you said I want to bring you us said back according to, to pro, you said according to prophecy. Yes. Right. The reason why the, the Jews are favoured by God. The reason. Right? And they're, they're the reasons why we got the mobile phone and this and all well, this. Well, kind what of was stuff. the greatest blessing that the Jews no, have brought? To no, you? but hang on, hang on. When we go to the African Hebrew, the African Jew, they're not treated the same way as a European Jew are treated. They're not. By who? By their own their own European Jewish brethren. You take that with the Jews. You're asking me to defend what the Jews are doing to other Jews. I have no part in that. That's not my that's not my issue. But then wouldn't that go against prophecy? No, because the the, 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 the point You're that, saying there's only a particular group so of European Jew that are favoured. I have now. never said European No, you don't Jew. have you don't have to say but it. I haven't said but that. that's what we can see. No, that's what you're saying. No, but that's what we can see though. No, that's what you're saying. I have not said that. <laughs> bro, did the anyone the did African, anyone hear the word the European Jew, Jew is not slip out of the my same mouth as in that way? Jew, no. bro. Yeah, but you, here, here's the problem, sorry. Is that That's why I speak about sorry. black politics, because it doesn't matter sorry. where black people stay. Sorry. They're treated the same. You because They're treated the same globally, because, bro. Because black nationalism is so important to you, you have misheard what I've said. Because I have never, ever sought to defend any kind of discrimination or, or even suggested in any way that the European Jew is better than the African you Jew. You don't have Those to. Those words did not come out of my it. mouth. No, I never said they did, and I'm not saying you did. You said that you tried to imply what I'm saying to you, that bro. that was what, what I was I'm talking about, you, and I was talking about something entirely okay, different. Okay, but what I'm saying to you is, when we look at the Jewish community, okay, the favoured ones by God, as you, as you put it, yeah. and there are many people within this favoured community, you've got Asian Jews, you've got African Jews, you've got European Jews, yeah. from the from what you say, the seed of Abraham. Yeah. Within that community, yeah. the African ones seem to be at the bottom of the social economic ladder. So yeah. they're not treated the same, because so, when people say, hang by on. By who? Um, but hang on, wait, wait there, bro. In Africa? Wait, wait, wait. So by other Africans? Wait, 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 wait. When you say Jew, yeah. a picture automatically paints in your mind of what a Jew is, whether you believe it or not. You don't think of an African and when you say the word Jew. may not be the same thing that you've well, got and I've You got. don't think of an African when you say the term Jew. I'm sorry. No one does. I'm sorry, that's not true. If I say the Jews, are we thinking about African people or Asian people? What does that prove? Or, are you talking to me? People? If they have a different perspective, what does that prove? You're talking no, to me, No, we don't Sarah. think like that, though, because we're, we're, Who's we're, we? we're psychologically programmed. Me and you don't think the same on a lot of things. So what do it surprise uh, you that Bob, we think man. differently about when we talk about Jews? So let me to have let an me, objective conversation. I, I am trying to have an objective conversation with you because the thing that is your concern is black nationalism. Mm. And your pre the original premise that sent us on this very... Sir, well, you, we were actually talking about you? why I became... Yeah, yeah, why yeah, I absolutely, 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 absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we're going to yeah. split this conversation into two, I hope. Two parts, so, yeah, two parts. So my point to you is right. that, that the Coptic and Orthodox churches in Africa that are as old as anything in Europe demonstrate that Christianity is not a hindrance to black development. Remember, I spoke, I spoke about the current form. Don't. I am when I am speaking of Christianity. You're speaking about in its entirety. I am speaking about the global church. I'm not. Yeah. I don't. Right. So what you're but here's, what you're doing now I'm is I'm talking about the white Jesus yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and the curse of Ham and all that. Yeah, exactly. It's a hindrance right. to black let, people. Let, let's 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 just let's just deal with that the the, the white Jesus. Yeah. Let's deal with that. Let, the very first picture of Christ that mm. I ever saw when I became a Christian mm -hmm. was not of a white Jesus. What was it of? It was of a black Jesus. Fantastic. Where's that one? Yeah. But just Google it. You can find no, it. No, where is it? In, ge in general well, you, day to day life? If you, if, you, if you go to any Orthodox church in the Middle East, you will see Jesus not painted as a white man. He is painted as an olive toned man, which according to Kemet philosophy means he's part of the tribe of Ham. Now, in terms. No, well, Whose philosophy? Callum. Speak to Callum. He's talking about all these groups having their origins in Africa. Mm, okay. Okay. However, the point that I'm making to you is that Jesus, when I when I was in Japan, mm. Jesus was portrayed as Japanese. I know for a fact, because I've seen them with my own eyes, that the Coptic Christians portray Jesus as an Egyptian. Ethiopian 
Christians portrayed Jesus as, as a black, black African. Right, because that, because that Ethiopian Christianity, right, came before, like I said, the current form of Catholicized Christianity. No, the, I said this before And I, I corrected you then, and I'll correct you again. The Coptic form of Christianity, the Ethiopian form of Christianity is Catholic because the thing that defines a Catholic church is the structure of bishop, priest, and deacon. Okay, but what, what, what you are doing, okay? Talking about my faith. Yeah, but you, what you're saying is you look at Christianity as a... Which it is, a but, global community. But it's not, though. It is. It's not. It is. It's not, though, because you have different forms of Shall Christianity. Shall I prove it to you? Yeah, but you have different forms of Christianity, but... Shall I prove it? Ladies and gentlemen, if you are a Christian, and I only want practicing Christians to do this, will you raise your hand, please? Right, could you just tell me where you're from? What country? I'm half Sri Lankan, half English. Half Sri Lankan, half English. French. French. Nigerian. Nigerian. What French, British. French, British. London. London. English. Irish. Irish. English. The Christian Peruvian. The Christian community <laughs> is a global community and it includes whites, blacks, Hispanics, we know this. Irish. We know this. We, we. In Nigeria, what color is Jesus? That's not that's irrelevant. Uh, irrelevant. No, it's it's irrelevant. Not, it's not red herring. In Nigeria, what color is Jesus? No, what, what color is it say in the Bible? My friend? No, no, I question, no, no, question. no, no, we're not going what's portrayed. No, no, I'm, I'm oh, not. Oh, yeah, no. listen to me. <laughs> okay, oh, yeah, listen to me now. Oh, yeah, what color is Jesus now? <laughs> exactly, you. I want to What color is Jesus now? Just answer the question directly. What color is Jesus in Nigeria? In your, experience, in your experience. Well, some people. How in your oh, what have I seen? Okay, what have I seen? Yes. I've seen, I've seen some, some people portray him as a white Jesus. Some people as black as well, yeah. So he's saying that there's black Jesus is in Nigeria. Are you saying there's black statues of Jesus in Nigeria? There may be some. I don't know Maybe. all of Nigeria. So all you Niger seen any I've Fair enough. No, your point's valid. I, I, I think that it, it is a mistake of the missionary movements of the past that, that the artistic representation of Christ should be European in Africa. I, for me, I find that embarrassing. But what colour you know, was he though, according to the Bible? He, he doesn't mention a colour. Doesn't mention a Revelations colour. Revelations 1 verse 14? That, that's a, a, a metaphorical imagery. Ah, no, In that same picture, he also has a sword coming out of his mouth yeah. and right? blazing like the sun. So, then, so, so you so, can't no, use no, no. that. That should be the image then. That if that is the only represented image or that is the only biblical image we have of him. If you're going to make that argument. No, hang on, hang on. on. If, if that's the only, listen. If, make that point. If, we, if we go to the Bible, and he's described as a, a bronze, a burnt bronze skinned man yep. with white woolly hair, yep. right? That should be the image that we're portraying of him. Right. Right? And, and, with, and, with, with, and if he's got swords coming out of his mouth, yeah. then so be it. Okay. That is the only representation we have of him. Except, this guy on the cross, this white except dude, Sarah comes Garvey, from where? Except Sarah Garvey does not dictate Christian art. Yeah. But the Bible should. No, Sarah Garvey doesn't dictate. But the dictate. Bible should though. Hold on. Sarah Garvey does not dictate Christian art. But the Bible Christian should. art has been debated heavily within the church. Mm. And we have come to a settled conclusion on this matter. What is and it? that settled conclusion is that Christ can be represented according to the people that Christ is saving. So if Christ is saving the white European, it is acceptable to represent him as a white European. If he is saving the black African, then he can be represented as a black African. If he is saving, exactly. He's, he, because Christ is relevant to all people. But you don't understand, an sorry. Art, an art is simply communication. But you don't understand the psychological effects. Because, okay, because you're- I disagree no, with white but because, no, but because Jesus you're white, yeah, in Africa. You, we because, are on the same page. But because you're a white European, you don't understand the psychological effects of an African constantly seeing a white European as God or as the son of God. You don't understand those psychological effects. Now, when I asked this brother whether Jesus was white or not. No, you see, in I, Nigeria. Hang on, hang you on, said in, in Nigeria. Yeah, in Nigeria. And you were talking about on, art. Listen, did you see how much he started? Just to, just, uh, but, uh, but it, yeah, it doesn't matter. You see? That's what we have to deal no. with, bro. We have no. to deal with that. No, the, because psychologically he's no. still trying so, to get. So I tell you what uh, was really happening matter. there. It matters, bro. If, what was really happening there is he's a Christian. Matter. He wants to support me, and he doesn't want to help your argument. That's why he was stuttering. <laughs> That's nah, what was really nah, happening. Nah, nah, that was what was really nah, happening. Nah, nah. The fact of the matter that. is, Sarah. The fact of the matter is, yeah, Sarah, yeah, let's go, is, let's go. is you've chucked the baby out with the bathwater. I I agree with you. 
that the church should have been addressing your concerns and your questions. And the church needs to address the question of black identity. It really does. And it must do so by demonstrating the truth, the historical truth, that Christianity has been as much African as it has ever been European. Mm. And using the Coptic and the Orthodox Church to demonstrate that truth. As well as the fact I, I agree that. that the church has been that. Middle Eastern as much that. as it has been European. And it has been Southeast Asian as much as it has been European. Because you might not know this, but one of the apostles, St. Thomas, went to India and founded a church in India whilst the churches were being set up in Africa, the Middle East and Europe. Mm. So my faith mm -hmm. is truly global and the church is a home for all people, including black people like you. And it isn't in this, about... In this current form? It, the current form of the church is a global community. I've just demonstrated that. And I said... Brother, I'm, am I superior okay. to you because I'm white? And I'm am not I superior, superior to you? Am I superior to you because I'm white? Am I superior to you because I'm white? So we've got, we've got three people from three different well, parts of the world and none of them think I'm su not, not, superior because I'm I've, white. I've never, I've never asserted that you were superior. You're talking about a white Jesus. Yes, but I'm not asserting that you're superior. I'm, I'm not. Saying, I'm, I'm not claiming to be. Right, and, 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 and I'm, I never said you were. But what I'm saying is the psychological effects of having a white Jesus, okay? Black people in Africa have had a white Jesus image. Ethiopians? This is what I'm saying. Okay. In this current form, the black people in Africa, with the coming of slavery, with the coming of colonization, have had a white Jesus imprinted, emblazoned within their psychology. And I agree, okay. let that go. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Black people aren't even ready to let it go yet. They now, need now to. hang on, they're yeah. not ready to let it go. Yeah. Because they've been, they, they, they have had that for so long that they actually believe Jesus Christ is a white man. I am yet to meet, I mean, I, don't get me wrong, I know there are some American Christians that actually think Jesus is white. I, I, I've seen them and it was hugely embarrassing. Yeah. However, I have... God all, is a white man on the Hold on one Chapel. second, hold on a second. Because what I think you've done there, Sarah, is very patronising to African Christians. Because what you're assuming is that they cannot be educated or erudite enough to realise that Jesus wasn't white. And I am pretty sure, mm. I am pretty certain mm -hmm. that actually... The whole 35 million Ethiopian Christians are quite convinced that Jesus wasn't white. But when you know that you that the better, 15 million Coptic Christians know that Jesus wasn't white, and that actually the vast majority of Christians from the rest of Africa know that Jesus wasn't white. Should I should I show you the Hold big on. should I show you Hold on one second. Should I show you Sarah Sarah the huge statue of Jesus being built in Nigeria right I'll, now. I'll believe that it's white. Okay. Oh, he's whiter than I snow, bro. I believe you, right? <laughs> okay. Right? But the point is, the point is, Africans searching for an African identity don't need to reject Christianity because Christianity is it's rooted in yeah? Africa. It's the truth as well, isn't it? It's rooted in Africa, brother. Okay. Yeah? As a Christian, all of those beautiful cathedrals that were carved out of the mountains in Ethiopia, mm -hmm. yeah? That's my inheritance. The Church of Ladabella? Yeah, my okay. inheritance. It's my because inheritance. I, uh, absolutely. Yeah, but I, can African. Hey, but, but I can engage with it more fully because I'm Christian. <laughs> now, you, and, and here's the yeah, thing. I, I wouldn't go there and, and like exactly, pray and stuff. But yeah, I yeah, would, yeah. and I so would yeah, the yeah, Ethiopian Christians. So what I'm saying to you is I have more in common with those African Christians than you do. 100%. Thank you. In, in your faith, but not in your genetics. Yes. I right, agree. Right, so, yeah. that, that's, that's what, but like I say, what we're coming from But this, genetics don't decide your education. Yeah, but genetics don't, yeah, but you genetic, uh, that's fair. And but genetics ge don't decide but your culture. But genetics don't decide, like I said, genetics don't decide your faith. Faiths can change. They do. Right. That Those people that are Christian today could be Muslim tomorrow. Yeah. And then they could change from Muslim to a yeah. Buddhist or a whatever. Brother. Right? So my, that's what I'm saying. But we're coming, this, we're coming to this conclusion based on two totally different foundations. You understand that? I, I agree with you completely. Right. But what you're doing is you're saying that we've got all these socioeconomic problems that black people face. Yes. Right? And then and you're... white Jesus is yeah, and, a and, hindrance. And, and, and what I'm saying to you is white I Jesus agree that African Christians should get rid of white images of Jesus. Mm. Because it just seems The white silly. man said that. I Listen to the white man, that. guys. I am saying that. <laughs> Christians who are from Africa, stop having white Jesuses in your churches. And, and <laughs> white Adam and Eve as well. Uh, and white Adam and Eve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not against that. But hold on one second. The socioeconomic problems 
that are faced by, sorry, sorry, sorry. by, by black people, yeah, has got nothing to do with their genetics and everything to do with socio-economic and political issues, okay? No, Christianity, it's got, it's got, it's hold on one second, it. hold on one second. The Christian faith mm -hmm. has been the thing that has sustained black African communities against apartheid. The vast. Don't say that, Bob. It's true. Uh, that's patronising. No. Because it's as if you're saying. Martin Luther with, King would disagree on, with you. On, but it's as if you're saying. It's as if you're saying without Christianity, they wouldn't have been able to do the same stuff. No, I'm not saying that. All right. So what are you? I'm saying just then? saying a historical reality, which is the truth. That regardless of how they came about it, the Christian faith has been the the, the nourishing of the, the black African community in America through apartheid. And that's a truth. It, is, it has been... It has been it's it a has, reality. It has nourished them through... Are you denying uh, it? No, no, no. It has nourished them through, you know, Jim Crow. It yep. has nourished them through yep. all this The Ku Klux Klan. The Ku Klux Klan, it all helped of them. It. it helped to organise them in the fight against apartheid. 100%. The churches but were is, fundamental right, to that But structure. it's not the reason they did you it. You know when you look at those... Do you understand, Bob? Hold on, hold on. It's not the reason that they did it. Christianity Actually, is not the reason. That's not true. That is not true. Christianity is a reason. Yes. So you're saying to me, uh, people that have been oppressed, right, regardless of what religion that they have in their hand, yeah. will, regardless of what book, will not up, rise up and go against the oppressor. Is that what you're saying? It, de it depends on the book they've got in their hand. It no, depends no, no, on no, the no. Religious Hold book. on one second. No, no, I'm not saying that people won't rise up against oppression. What I am saying is the thing that inspired those particular people in history mm. to rise up against their oppression was the Bible. And that's a fact. When Martin Luther King was appealing to existential reasons as to why apartheid was wrong, he quoted the Bible. Yes, because we have... Okay, so you have to... Okay, so it's a truth hang on, then. Hang on. Marcus Garvey did the same thing. Yeah. Okay, Marcus Garvey was a Christian. Yeah. Right? And I love Marcus Garvey. However, Marcus Garvey wasn't stupid. He knew he had to use the tools at his disposal to galvanize the people against the oppression yeah so if i if, if i'm if i'm in a place where all i've got is the quran right and i need to galvanize the people i need to use the things at my disposal yeah now we all know that we're oppressed but we need to i can grab the quran and say listen in this verse someone da, 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 yeah. and we're yeah. going to use that to inspire us and galvanize us yeah so what i'm trying to so say my answer is, to my, my, my response to that to prove you wrong that the book does make a difference is where was the emancipation movements in the islamic world there are none there are none, there and are there, none. Still are none. there still are none, and Africans are still being taken as slaves, slaves. by Muslims Agreed. in Africa. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. So, but 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 look at the look at the Christian world trade. I'm not here to justify it or defend it in any way. But were there emancipation but, but movements? The, hang on. The were there emancipation hang on, hang on. movements in the, the West? Psychology, though. Answer the Islam. question. No, no, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get to it. Did white people partake in emancipation movements in the West? Of course they And did. what inspired them? The Bible. Thank you. But So it does make a difference which book you're reading. No, but listen, listen to what I'm trying to say, Bob. In the Islamic world, if we're going back to the Islamic world, right, where yeah. there's been no, like, real uprising. Yeah. Black people have been in that position for 1,400 years. Yes. Right? They actually revel. What is taught... Not just in the, not because we know that the, the, the Islam is not just the Quran. Yeah. Right? It's all the Hadith and it's all the other teachings and it's a social economic standing. It is taught to black people that they are less than. Yeah. It's taught to them. Okay. Yeah. So I've spoken to black Muslims here and they don't think that it's a problem. They won't, they won't even speak about it. They'll be like, oh, you know, well, yes, you I know. know. I've spoken to the same Be people. Right. Because the subjugation and the oppression the separation the oppression and the psychological effects are run so deep yeah i don't know when the arab world and the muslim world is going to have some kind of i don't know uprising with the black people there but it needs to happen however like i said nat turner also used the, you use the bible right yeah but what i'm trying to say is when you oppress a people you, you don't need you don't necessarily need a book because the people in haiti the haitian revolution those people, <coughs> those African people, rose up against the French, yep. and they used African spiritual practices. Mm -hmm. If they had the Bible, they could have done the same I'm not, thing. I'm not denying. I'm not right. denying that other things have inspired people. I'm not making the argument. That Your the argument Bible is that the Bible, in this instance, was the thing. That that is the historical reality. That that is the historical reality. Now, in, let's be clear. In, in that case, Wait, but it, did, it didn't need to be. Hold though. on one second. You know who Cassius Clay was, right? <laughs> nah, I kind of. 
Oh, you're thinking Muhammad Ali. Ali? No, I'm talking about the real Cassius Clay, the oh, historical okay. figure Cassius Clay. Oh, okay, I thought you were talking about Muhammad Ali. No, I'm not talking about <coughs> Muhammad Ali. No, Muhammad Ali was a fool who took on the name of a slave trader, Muhammad and Ali, two slave traders, and abandoned, because he was brainwashed, to, to dismiss a name of Cassius Clay. Cassius Clay was a real emancipationist, a Christian who advocated <coughs> for the abolition of slavery at the founding of America. Mm. Okay. So Muhammad Ali, that buffoon, goes, I, was don't, a good I don't want to take it. Was he was a good boxer until Henry Cooper knocked him on his ass. <laughs> but he, he was. He, yeah, but he still won. Uh, he, 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 anyway, that, let's, let's, not, won. let's not get into a debate about boxing. People get they, slit they, the glove. they slit the glove. They slit the glove. But the point of the matter is the point of the matter is Muhammad Ali, like so many people who, who, who join these sort of pan African movements like the Nation of Islam, the Hebrew Israelites, the Kemets. They, nah, they, one there's, second. There's no such thing as the Kemets. Okay, so, Kemetic philosophy. There isn't. They, they have been brainwashed, and I'm gonna use Muhammad Ali as an example. Muhammad Ali says he didn't want a slave name, Cassius Clay. <coughs> so what he took was a slave owner's name, Muhammad Ali, right? <laughs> Cassius Clay was a Christian it, so. Was a some research for you. Yeah, I can't so was a Christian who opposed the slave trade and was inspired to do so by the Bible. Was he a European? He was. Okay. Yeah. Now let me just be clear, right? This is this is the history of how Christianity has been interplaying into this whole dynamic of slavery mm. over Christian history, because we know Christians have been as guilty as having slaves as anyone else. Minutes. Yeah. What time is it, mate? It's five past two. Five past two, that's fine. Go okay. Go yeah, it's more important than yeah, here, mate. No more. And just so you know, right? Like, just for those of you that might be new to all of this, this brother here, right, had a death threat put on him. The Islamic Dawah team are connected to people who conspired to kill this man, to kill uh, uh, the person stood in front of you because he was challenging Islam. Now, he can challenge me as much as he wants. I, I, don't, I don't think you're gonna conspire to I, kill him. I will never conspire to kill him. Do you know why? Because the book that you're reading makes a difference. And I am taught to love In that sense, I my agree enemies. With you. I agree with you. I am taught to love. So he is opposed to me ideologically, and I am mm. opposed to him, but I will never seek to hurt him. I wanna convince him through love and reason that there is a better way. Yeah? Ain't gonna happen, but well, you can try. I'm mate. gonna try hard. So, right, in 873, in 873, Pope John VIII banned the holding of Christian slaves. In 960 AD, Doge Pietro IV banned slave trade outright in all of his sovereignty. In 1080 AD, William I banned slavery in England and Normandy. In 1117 AD, slavery was banned outright in Iceland. In 1220 you know AD, the Schaschen Spiegelberg condemned slavery, quoting directly that the, it was an affront to the image of God that all men were made in. In 1256, Bologna banned slavery outright. In 1315, King Louis X of France banned slavery completely and declared that any slave entering his kingdom was automatically free. By contrast, Islam. <laughs> Qatar banned slavery in 1952. Iran banned slavery in 1929. Iraq banned slavery in 1924. Morocco banned slavery in 1922. Egypt banned slavery in 1895 because of the British. I'm not, so have you got Mauritania? Mauritania banned slavery in 1981. That's what I've got. 2007. Fair enough. Oman banned slavery in 1970. And here's the clutch, here's the clincher. Saudi Arabia, where Islam has been <coughs> unchallenged for 1400 years and has dominated that culture, banned slavery in 1962. So that's the difference the books make. It is important. 
And I'm saying to you as a black nationalist, mm. your cause is just. Mm. It is important that people help to improve the situation of black people mm. in society who are recovering from a historical injustice. Yeah. But you don't need to throw the baby out with the bathwater. I, I will say this. I do not disagree, right, that the Christian nations have banned slavery before the before the um, Muslim nations have banned it, right? However, like I said, the cycle... I'm dealing with what I have now, okay? So I'm saying the current form of Christianity, in its current form... Which is the European Orthodox Church is. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, it is. You know what I'm talking about when I say that, Bob. Yeah, but... but the, I'm, hey, talking I'm, about, I'm talking about white Jesus. I am correcting you that no, Jesus no, no, is no. not portrayed because, as right, white. But you, you, have to find, you have to find me black people generally... Generally, 35 million in Ethiopia. Yeah, but when Ethiopia 20 million in, 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 um, generally that don't that generally that don't have that. First of all, have the Ethiopian uh Christian teachings because that's what 81 books, I yep. believe. 81 yep. books, yeah, yeah, right? there is a difference so got, in canon. They've got 81 books in the yep. Ethiopian Bible, and Do you then know what they yeah, are? I, I can't name them. I'm not a Christian, I know what they are. Yeah, good for you. That's your supposed to, it's your history. Thank you. Um, my history. Um, what was I gonna say? Yeah, the current form of Christianity that black people have. I would say is a hindrance. And the reason why I say that is because you are waiting, okay? Waiting on someone who ain't gonna turn up. That's not true. Ain't gonna turn up. That's not true because you're assuming that- And not only ain't gonna turn up, he's I would say that Jesus must be a black guy because he's, <laughs> he's got black man's timing. Right. Because we're still waiting on that motherfucker and he ain't arrived yet. Brother, brother, brother. So let, let, let's, 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 let, let's not be disrespectful. I, I, I would ask you. I've got a roll out though, Bob. Do you know what I'm saying? All right. So we, 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 I'll leave you with this point. Yeah, go on. And this is my final point, and we'll just it's, stop. It's, it's been interesting. Yeah, my fi It's been a pleasure talking to you. Mm, it's the first it really time, has, it's and yeah, it's the first time. Mm. And it just goes to show that people can oppose one another without having to descend in the kind of things that the Islamic Dawah team have brought to Speaker's Corner. Yeah. But, but my, my point to you is this, right? I get the fact that the church wasn't dealing with your questions. Mm. And, and unfortunately, and I'm going to say this to the camera, there are lots of churches that are not dealing with the questions that are coming from their congregations. And particularly in the black church at the moment, a question that has to be dealt with is the question of black identity and the question of the, the slave past, mm. right? And the churches have got to grapple with those things. But the church is black as much as it is white, and it has always been black as much as it is white. And Africans are as much a part of the church history as Europeans are. Christianity is not a white man's religion. It is a religion for the world and for all <coughs> nations, including your own. Fantastic, and I'll say this in closing. Black people existed before Christianity, before Judaism, before Islam. And so we existed within nations, okay, that flourished, flourished. So we don't necessarily need either Judaism, Christianity, or Islam. And though you are a Christian, and that's fine, and though there are many black Christians, what I'm trying to tell black people is, is that we don't need this, okay, to actually <clears throat> go into the future. Okay, it's a pleasure talking with you. You look after yourself, enjoy the rest of your Peace, Sunday. family, peace. Take care, guys.